Narcissists do not like to be questioned in general, you know that. They react poorly because they believe nobody can ask them anything. They never let anyone access their inner world because that could bring to the surface what they have been suppressing for years. There are some questions that no matter what, they won't answer and will always deflect. In this episode, we are going to explore the same questions. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. In this episode, we will explore seven questions you cannot ask a narcissist. Why? Because they won't answer. Sounds interesting? Consider subscribing and turning on the bell notifications. A question for you first. Did you ever ask a question that agitated the narcissist or that they were not able to answer? Let me know in the comments. First question. Why do you act so nicely before strangers? Why do you wear a mask? You certainly want to be friendly and pleasant when you are around strangers or people who you do not know very well. When you meet them for the first time, you do not see it as a fresh opportunity to manipulate them through your fakeness and get them to like you. But narcissists, when they see the same people, they see them as a blank slate to write whatever story they want to. Their superficiality kicks in and they make up all sorts of stories to influence other person's emotional state and get admiration, adoration and, and attention from them. The new person walks away thinking what a great person they are when it is all an illusion the narcissist cast for them. Question number two, why are you so threatened by my differences? Your difference of opinion, preferences, thoughts and feelings is a major threat to a narcissist because difference means the lack of control and the rejection of their authority over you. They need you to agree with them, feel what they think is the right thing to feel and choose what they believe is best for you. And when you do not do any of these, they see it as a violation and a form of rebellion. They're stunned and shocked by seeing you being you. It's as if you have betrayed them by expressing yourself. Your identity has no place in the relationship. You are an extension which has to do what they think you should do. They can't see beyond themselves and need everyone to conform and act as per their standards. If that doesn't happen, they feel you and others involved have been unfair towards them. Also, considering your perspective or giving your opinions some space would mean accepting that they may be wrong or not know something as fully as they claim to. Giving your opinions space would take the focus away from them and they won't be able to be the center of the universe anymore. They feel threatened by your originality, so they try hard to change or destroy it. Third question, what are some of your deepest pains and hurts? If you were to ask a narcissist that question, they would look at you as if you have asked a stupid and a silly question. They believe they do not have any hurts or traumas to recall and are way stronger to be impacted by what happened to them. In their head, this is how it looks like. I'm not a weakling like you. You may have pains to dwell on, but I don't. They might acknowledge that some people maltreated them in the past, but to negate the impact, they would add, that doesn't bother me anymore. It never did. It is in the past. But then if you go on and continue asking, if you don't have any hurts, why are you so mean? Or why are you so reactive? They will berate you for interrogating and judging them. They do not see the connection between their present abusive behavior and past painful and dysfunctional experiences. The notion that I am above this is enough for them to justify why nothing happened to them and why all the problems in the relationship are because of you. The fourth question that goes along with that is, why is it impossible for you to admit flaws? Whenever a narcissist makes a mistake, instead of acknowledging it and taking responsibility, they blame it on you and thoroughly convince you that the fault is yours, the dogs or any other object that can receive projection. They have a thick wall of defensiveness that will not let them admit their flaws. Moreover, Talking about their mistakes would mean accepting they are a commoner like you and there is no differentiator. They can't have the same humanness you have because that would mean having the same weaknesses. Number five, do you think you need to change or grow in any way? Dare to ask a narcissist if they think they need to change and you will face the wrath of the raging narcissist. They do not think they need to grow and change because the need for them to change implies 
that they are not perfect and do not have it all together. Asking the question triggers their suppressed shame and they attack you like a wounded animal. To them, change is death. The death of their false self, egocentrism and everything in between. As per them, if there is anyone who needs to change, it's you. You need to be more compliant. You need to speak less. You need to stop questioning and you need to become a doormat without complaining. Sixth question. Do you genuinely believe that your opinions are facts and they supersede what other people think? Truth be told, narcissists have issues with simple things like where you want to go on your vacation, what is the right thing to do on holiday, and what political view is correct. They have an opinion about almost everything and believe their opinion is the objective truth. Instead of saying, well, here is my opinion and asking, what is yours? It's like, no, I do not want to know what your opinion is because it doesn't matter. There is only one that matters and it is mine. This self-righteousness comes from their grandiosity and false ideology that they know it all. They are entitled deeply to say everyone is wrong and irrelevant before them. Seventh and the most important one. If you hate me so much, why do you keep coming back? The narcissist will never tell you that they keep coming back because they need supply and cannot survive without it. They need you. Instead, they will make it about you and say something like, I keep coming back because I pity you. Or, I know you get sad and that hurts me, which is why I keep coming back. They won't tell you that it makes them feel superior every time you suffer and let them back in. They love to be needed, especially by you. They love that you're emotionally intertwined with them and cannot let go. It makes them feel important and powerful. By nature, they love to be in power and to leave and then win you back is one of the ways to feel it. They may also guilt trip you by blaming you for keeping them stuck and not letting go. In reality, their need for supply makes them more dependent than a codependent. In a nutshell, they are not able to answer any question that has something to do with reflection, realization and correction. They cannot look within, so they just react and deflect that was it for today's episode i hope you found it helpful if you did let me know in the comments drop a like and subscribe i'll talk with you in the next one until then let the healing begin